So a couple of videos ago, we looked at the messaging instruction, which allowed us to send data between the Micrologics PLC, as well as the Compact Logics PLC sitting in that box behind me. Today, we're going to be looking at something a little bit more complex. And what I'm referring to is produced and consumed models. So produced and consumed models are very, very critical in control systems applications. And essentially, they allow you to send deterministic data between different PLC platforms. So in front of me right here, I have a uh, control logics chassis as you can see here it is uh, obviously upside down for you but uh, the point that i want to make is that i will be connecting this ethernet card this is an en 2tr card which is going to be connected into the network behind me onto the switch that you see in the box and then we're going to be passing data from this logix 5561 processor which is sitting in that slot zero to the compact logix the l24 er processor which is sitting also on the top in that box so very very cool concept and we're going to get into the software i'm going to talk a little bit about the hardware and then we're going to be programming a full example on both plcs which are running different versions versions of uh, one RS Logix and one Studio 5000. So really, really cool uh, concept. And it is extremely, extremely important in a manufacturing environment to know how to do this. What is going on guys? Vlad here with SolusPLC.com. If you enjoy videos on PLC programming, HMI development, or anything involving industrial automation, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And of course the notification bell in order to be notified of the latest videos I will be releasing on a weekly basis. And without any further delay, let's get into today's video. All right, so once again, as far as hardware is concerned, it is really a simple uh, solution in this case. So what I have here is essentially a Stratix switch, which is configured as an unmanaged device, which means that it allows to uh, for any traffic to pass through. And into that switch, I've tied in multiple PLCs from the box, as well as the control Logix chassis that I have sitting right here. So it's just a single cable going from the Ethernet card on that a chassis into that Stratix switch. I also have a cable which is sitting on the floor right here, which goes from that same switch into that into my computer. And that's going to allow me to configure my card to be on the same network and be able to talk to the PLC, which is sitting up here and to the control logics chassis PLC, which is sitting down here. And of course, once we establish the program, the communication is going to be between the two PLCs and my computer will only allow me to go online and monitor how that's going on. Let's get into the software. I'll show you some of the configurations that I needed to do to my ethernet card. And then we're going to proceed into RS logics and studio 5000. All right, so here we are on the Windows desktop. And as you can see, I have two different Ethernet drivers because I am running a virtual machine. And effectively, this becomes our driver, which is going to the Ethernet cable that I just showed you. And we need to set up the right IP addresses based on the IP addresses of the PLCs. I've shown you this in a previous video, but really briefly, I want you to uh, pay attention to the setting because we need to be on the same subnet as the PLCs in order to be able to communicate with them. And of course, they also need to be on the same subnet or you will have to create different paths which is a much more advanced topic, but that is also possible. So here's the IP address that I'm using on my computer, which is 192.168.1.200. Is it, it is a private uh, subnet with a mask of two uh, or three times two five two five five and then a zero we're going to hit okay and the next thing we want to check is the communications to those plcs from our laptop and of course we're going to go into rs links classic so rs links allows us to see everything that is on our network and what you will notice is that more and more i'm trying to systematize the way i set up networks so here for example in a local subnet if you uh, configure this driver, you will notice that I'm browsing everything on that particular subnet. And as you become more and more concerned with networking issues, you will start to use a different driver. So here I have a configured driver, which is only going to talk to the devices that I've specified. That way there's no confusion when you run into multiple PLCs, exactly what is on which IP address. And so my uh, compact logics is going to be on that 1.11 and my control logics chassis or the EN2 TR card is going to be on that 1.30. Actually, it's in an EN2 T card. We're going to hit OK. And once we browse that subnet, we will notice that both of those IP addresses are showing up. So if I expand this 1.11, you will notice that I have this um, compact logics 
PLC, it is a 1769 L24ER QB1B processor. And then the control logics is going to be a 1756-L61 processor. Of course, it is in the zeroth slot of that chassis, as you saw earlier. So we can definitely communicate to everything. We're going to launch RS logics as well as Studio and see what kind of program we can set up in order to communicate between those processors. All right, so we are connected to both controllers. So this is the controller, which is the compact logics as you can see it resides at that, that 11 address and it is also like I mentioned the type of the processor is written right there and you also have version 30.11 which means that it is using studio 5000 which you see in your screen right now now the, the other processor is going to be that 1756 l61 and that is using an older version of rs logics uh, 5000 or essentially the latest of 5000 but not studio so that's going to be 20.19 as you can see at the top here and that is actually the latest version to which you can flash that particular controller in order to go into studio you need the l71 processor in any case we are online we are getting uh, the program what i'm going to do first of all i'm going to save the programs because creating produced consumed models requires you to go offline so once again i'm going to navigate into both processors i'm going to save everything to be the latest and i'm going to go offline with both of them so i'm going to click this little green button select go offline and then the other one i'm also going to go offline now the thing that we need to set up first is going to be the network path between the two processors so if i'm looking at the compact logics i'm going to scroll down all the way into the ethernet rack and you will see that i do have some stuff already set up for the control logics rack so this should be already an established communication path for that particular ethernet piece so all i had to do was essentially right click this ethernet new module and then i'd added this uh en2f i'm not sure why that's an en2f let's see here let's go into properties but it should be an en2t in any case that's the ethernet bridge um, it does say fiber media. It's just a normal Ethernet RJ45 bridge. But anyways, that should be talking and we should be able to pull that data. If I remember correctly, I had to set this up so that I could read some of the tags that were coming through through that model. Uh, the next thing that we're going to set up is actually going into this UDT defined tags and we're going to create the UDT structure, which we're going to be passing between the two controllers. So I'm going to select new data type and this is going to be uh, UDT prod cons uh, produced for produce consume and here we're going to add a couple of members so first of all this is going to be status so status allows you to see what's going on with the produced consume model because what can happen is essentially somebody unplugs the ethernet cable and you no longer have the communication path and that uh, if it's critical to your process that is of course going to cause some issues so this is going to be of type con connection status just type in connection and next we're going to pass an array of dents so of course you can pass a single dent or you can pass a single boolean but uh, if you read the documentation you can pass up to 125 dents into a single ethernet packet so of course it's more advantageous for you to set it up to be uh, up to that limit but here we're going to do dent 50 so 50 dents I'm not sure why I'm not able to. Oh, this is just the name, sorry. Data. And then here I'm going to type in dent uh, 50. I wasn't sure why I couldn't type in the brackets. Dent 50, okay. So this is going to be uh, UDT produce consume. Now we need to create a tag which is going to be using this model. So let's just go into a. Uh, so we have the main task which is going to be having a, a lot of different things, but. If we go into our controller, we can just create it from here or you can, of course, create a new tag and then do it from that space. I'm going to in navigate into edit tags tab, go all the way down here. And this is going to be um, so this is going to be the compact logics CMP LX produced. So there's going to be a producer and consumer on the other end. In this case, it's going to be produced. And it's going to be of type that we've created, UDT underscore produce prod cons and tag will be truncated lost. Okay. Um, so that is going to be created. We're going to right click on this tag and we're going to look into properties because like I said, it cannot be of type base. It is going to be of type produced. 
the connection here, we don't need to specify the connection, but we do need to have a maximum of consumers of uh, how many PLCs are going to consume the stack. So this is where you can set this. And let's see here, that is good. Connection status is included. We've defined that. And let's see here. We don't need anything advanced. We're going to leave it by default for now. And since we only have one PLC that's going to be reading this tag, we can leave the max consumers at one. So that tag looks good. At the same time, we're going to set up the uh, consume tag, which is going to be... So I always try and um, uh, give in uh, the tag name of where the tag comes from. So this is going to be control logics, and this is going to be a consumed tag. So it's coming from the control logics and it's consumed. Therefore, it's going to get, uh, actually, we do need to change this. So UDT prod consumed. So this is going to be of the same type, but it is going to be a consume tag. So I'm going to right click this and then I'm going to go into my properties. Once again, instead of being base, it is going to be a consume tag and a consumed is going to have a little bit more setup. So the producer, as you can see here, it's currently not allowing me to see that. So let's go look at why that is so. It should be showing me the tree within this processor. So tag name. Hmm. Maybe we need to re-add the same structure. So let's go in here and let's try and re-add the module. So we are seeing EN2T. So I'm not sure why that cre got created as EN2F. So we're going to try this again. So as you can see, twisted paramedia. So that's correct. CLX PLC. And that's going to be on 30. Let's define it as such. So the revision, I believe, is going to be the latest. I'm going to hit OK and see if that works for us. Duplicate IP address. So let's um, let's redelete. Uh, let's redelete this particular structure. Like I said, I've used it before, but I'm not sure why. Uh, it's given us grief. So we need to go in here and I believe individually delete each one of these modules before it's going to allow us to delete that top level one. And I want to uh, I wanted you to see uh, these steps essentially on how to troubleshoot because it is a very um, I don't want to say difficult, but it's not a straightforward process to set up a produced consumed model. So we're going to delete all of these one by one. And now it should allow us to delete essentially this high level structure. So now I'm going to do this new module configuration once again, EN en to t and that's the card that we're using on the other end. Let's see here, so PLC, control logics PLC, private network dot 30. And if I let's let's just double check this since we already have this open, we should be able to see the card properties. Uh, 528, 528. Uh, so that needs to change here. So change this. 528, just so that matches. Chassis side 17, look okay. Uh, yes. Um, there might be some other settings that we'll need to play with a little bit down the road because I remember there being issues with the rack optimization. We're going to close out of this. And what I'm going to do is add a new module here as well. So this is going to be 1756L61 processor. So that's going to be uh, major revision 20. It's going to be in slot zero. Actually, that I I believe that I created this in slot zero. Let's see. Actually, no, I didn't create that anywhere. So okay, so that was that was a correct 1756L61. That was the correct configuration. So major revision 20 once again, slot zero. CLX main PLC. And revision 20.4. Electronic keying is okay. Fail to create module slot number and use by another module. Yeah, I did. I did make that mistake. So that's something that um, you do need to work with. Let's see here. Properties. Is there a slot zero yeah slot one okay so that should be correct now so that's in slot one and not in slot zero let's hit okay and then once again we're going to re-add the plc for the third time 1756 l61 major revision 20 hit okay that's going to be in slot zero and this is going to be clx main plc revision 20.4 Electronic King is okay. We don't care about that. 
Okay, so as you can see now we have the PLC placed in there. So now we can specify hopefully, yeah, we can now specify the producer as being that PLC and remote data. So based on this tag name, so this is going to be CLX prod since we haven't created that tag, but we can assume that that's going to be the tag name. So using a cast connection or ethernet IP, you can also do this over a different media. So device net and control net allow you to produce and consume as well. We are going to include the connection status and we're going to hit OK. So that should be good. Apply changes. Yes. And we should be able to go online with the controller. But of course, we're going to need a download. So let's download to the processor. And we're going to hit OK. So that's going to be taken care of on the compact logic side and allow it to uh, essentially produce the tag that is producing and consume the tag that it's consuming. But of course, the consumer will fail because it's unable to uh, to find that connection. As you can see here, there's this uh, yellow triangle, which essentially indicates here, let's go into let's go into status and let's go into monitor tags. And as you can see, the connection is definitely faulted. The connection is faulted on the compact logic side, because obviously we haven't set up the uh, we haven't set up the control logic side. So we're going to close out of this and we need to repeat effectively the same procedure. So we have this EN2T card which comes out onto the Ethernet and we're going to have to create a new module. Now here we're going to run into a, um, a problem because essentially a lower version, a lower version of this uh, PLC is not going to see the new, some of the newer stuff. So let's let's see if we can Let's see if we can filter a little bit better, but it's definitely going to be an Alan Bradley. It's going to be a 1769 processor, but um, actually it does have the L24 ERQB one b So I, I stand corrected in a lot of situations. For example, when you start working with 1756 L81 processors, you don't have access to the older type stuff. So we are going to be able to create this as is. So I'm going to hit create. And here I'm going to give this a name. So this is going to be CMP compact logics is that how I spelled it here CMP LX that is correct CMP LX PLC and it's going to be on the private network it's going to be on that dot 11 the revision is going to be different it's not going to be 30 it is going to be it's sorry it's not going to be 31 it's going to be 30 the so disable keying okay hit yes hit okay close and let's see so that got created just fine what we do need to uh, add is of course the data type so here we can uh, as you can see we can create a new one or we can import so let's go back into our compact logics what I'm going to do here is um, I should be able to essentially export this data type and I'm just going to save this on my C drive directly export and then I can import it into this program. So I'm going to import this data type. And that just makes it easier to transfer between the different controllers and to make sure, of course, that they are the same, you can make a typo and then you wouldn't be able to communicate with them. So let's see here. So that's going to be this one. I'm going to import that in. And I believe we should be okay. I'm not sure why this window is so large for the little contents that it's actually showing us. So I'm going to hit on OK. And I believe there shouldn't be any errors. Let's just double check on this produce consume model. So everything looks good. We have our connection status, we have everything we need. So now we can go back into controller tags, edit tags, there's not a whole lot on this PLC. So first of all, let's take care of the produce side. And once again, this needs to match on what's happening here. So remember that we set set up this tag. So I'm going to go back into properties. And here on the consumed side, we are expecting the producer to be CLX underscore prod. So CLX underscore prod. Data type is going to be UDT underscore prod consumed. And here we can define it as a produced tag. So let's go into properties. Once again, it is going to be a produced tag connection one status connection status included. Everything looks good. 
Uh, let's close that in. And then we're also going to consume a tag, which is going to be coming from the other tag that we've created. And the other tag is going to be called CMPLX produced. So let's see here. I just I just needed to copy that in. So that's going to be produced tag of type UDT. Once again, UDT prod consumed. And once we right click, we go into properties. And now it's going to be a consume tag connection. Here we should be able to specify the compact logics, unicast, RPI. We'll talk about that in a different video. And we should be all set to go. Let's see if that allows us to download everything. Fail to go online, controller specified path. Interesting, it should have been able to just go online with this particular controller, but let's see if we can download manually into it. <clears throat> controller specified and the slot number. So yeah, that looks, I'm not sure why this changed. That is actually very, very peculiar. I didn't pay attention to this, but um, the slot of the controller should be zero. And I think, yeah, that's going to be, so we need to move both of those cards. That's, uh, we didn't re-add this card, so that's really interesting. Okay, so that's going to go to slot one, and then this is going to go into slot zero in order to match the configuration. And let's see if that allows us to download from this menu. Um, that's really strange that it changed, but any in any case, we should be able to still see what's going on and everything should work as expected back to remote run so we are running once again and it looks like the symbols with the red with the yellow triangles have gone from that side but not from this side so i believe there's still going to be some errors that um that we'll be able to see so see as you can see it's not consuming the data so we're going to go into properties and see what's going on so here in the connection tab we should be able to see status, status included. So there's going to be some troubleshooting that we need to do. It's definitely not um, not working as expected. There's definitely some kind of an error uh, as far as the pathing goes. So let's troubleshoot that and see if we can figure it out. All right, so I spent just a little bit of time to figure this out. And essentially the problem is that when you go into properties here for version 30, you need to make sure that uh, your ethernet card to, to which you're communicating has disabled keying as well as rack connection as none. I remember running into this problem a while ago and of course, there is a Rockwell tech note on this issue, but essentially I had to go offline, change it to none and then download back to the PLC. So looking at the tags, you will notice that we have this in run mode and the connection is no longer faulted both on the um, essentially on the produced and on the consumed side. And so now what can we do with this data? So essentially we can open, for example, the produce tag and here we have data zero. And as we can see, it's all zeros. And if I go into the other processor, so here it's the uh, consumed side and I did actually mislabel this tag but that's not a big deal it's still a consumed tag as far as we are concerned and let's go into data zero on the same side and as soon as I change this tag so for example actually let's change the entire uh, integer so let's say five six seven eight nine and then go into my other side and as you can see that changes immediately to a five six seven eight nine and essentially this works very similar to what a messaging instruction will do but this is extremely deterministic and by deterministic in case you're not familiar with that term what that means is that data is constantly passed without you having to essentially send a packet into the uh, ethernet world and then hope that it gets to the other side so deterministic means that this data will always get between the two processors and you can monitor that status bit in order to make sure that everything is communicating as expected. And of course, the data is being passed extremely, extremely quickly. So here, um, I can type this in and a message instruction might be, you know, cycling every second and it might send out a packet. It might get there. It might not get here. But in, in this case, you have a very, very reliable source of information passing and you would use this for any critical application, for any motion controls, for any, uh, you know, safety sensors, for example. 
Uh, of course, you shouldn't control safety over Ethernet, but some of the modules that provide that capability would be using produced and consumed data. So this is highly critical data that you can pass between your controllers. And that's pretty much how you set up the produced and consumed model between a compact logics and a control logics PLC. And of course, it's very similar between a compact and compact and control and control logics. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. If you have any questions, make sure to post them down below in the comment section or on the forums for Solus PLC. .com. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.